BBOR Black Box Online Radio, coming to you from West Virginia at heart and from around the globe. And hello everybody, today is Friday, another Cooper Friday. Welcome to the show, how's everybody doing? Okay, today isn't really Friday, today is Saturday. The reason why this episode is coming out on Saturday is because of the Thanksgiving holiday that took place, and I was on the road and in the air, just visiting with some family back in West Virginia, and now I am currently in Boston, Massachusetts. And I caught a flight last night from the D.C. area up to Boston, and as I was walking through the terminal, I kid thee not, I heard this over the loudspeaker, Passenger McCoy, report to gate D-35. Passenger with the last name McCoy, report to gate D-35. And I was like, I wish my camera phone had been running at that exact second. 99% of the people in the terminal would not find an ounce of value in that. I was just thinking, what if, what if, what if? Something is about to happen. But on Fridays this year, I've done a regular segment about D.B. Cooper, the man responsible for the only unsolved skyjacking in U.S. aviation history. And in this episode, I'm going to be responding to a lot of the news coverage that has been going around over the last three days. And really, we have to go back about a week and a half when a YouTuber named Dan Greider released one of his newest videos talking about a possible breakthrough in the D.B. Cooper case. Dan Greider is someone who runs a channel called Probable Cause, and he has a suspect named McCoy, the one who I mentioned at the beginning, Richard Floyd McCoy, who went on to commit his own skyjacking after Cooper. Some people think that Richard McCoy was a copycat, and other people believe that McCoy was somebody who was, in fact, D.B. Cooper, that he committed multiple skyjackings. And as Dan Greider said very clearly on his YouTube channel, he believes that McCoy lost the money during the Cooper skyjacking, which was $200,000, so he concocted a new plan to get even more money, to get even twice the value of it, to get more than twice the value of it, and he asked for $500,000 during his skyjacking that took place later on, which I can just call the McCoy skyjacking because that has definitively been attributed to him. But that's not the focus of Dan Greider's claims right now. Dan Greider claims that he has found the parachute that has been connected to Richard Floyd McCoy, and this is a, this could be an enormous breakthrough if it were indeed true, because if he has found D.B. Cooper's parachute in Richard Floyd McCoy's belongings, I mean, I'm not even going to lie to you guys, for all intents and purposes, that would mean that this guy is most likely D.B. Cooper. And I know I'm playing Johnny Come Lately to the story because this has been out for a whole three days in the mainstream media, and as I said, for about a week and a half in the Vortex. But let's look at an article here from The Independent, which again came out three days ago. D.B. Cooper's infamous parachute may just have been found, breaking open the 50-year-old cold case. Well, we're dealing with more than 50 years now, actually, and as this article openly says, YouTuber Dan Greider said that he found a modified device matching the one used in the 1971 hijacking on a property in North Carolina. All right, so firstly, let's look at some ways that this post is structured. This one is saying that they may have just found the parachute. And I have not been a fan of the mainstream media for a very long time. And I've noticed that CNN has done a lot of reporting on this news story. They've done a lot of coverage on the D.B. Cooper case in the last three days, and maybe even since Dan Greider released his most recent video. But when they say these things, like, there may have been a new discovery, this is so different than when we see actual discoveries in the true crime world. And the points that I always come back to here on Black Box Online Radio are when we saw the Golden State Killer mystery get solved. We knew it. This was not just a maybe. No, they knew who the Golden State Killer was. When we saw the Long Island serial killer get arrested, we knew that this was the person. This wasn't just a maybe. And they present the stories in a very different way when they have definitive facts that support these 
claims as opposed to just possibilities that they are trying to dress up with a pre-Christmas ribbon. And that's really what um, a title like this is doing. And with the Golden State Killer case, they had DNA evidence that was connected to a suspect. And for all intents and purposes, even prior to the trial, the Golden State Killer had been identified as... Joseph D'Angelo, and with the Long Island serial killer case, even though he has not even been convicted yet, when Rex Hewerman was arrested, we were like, look at how they're presenting the facts. This person was most likely the Rex, the Long Island serial killer, talking about having his DNA found at multiple crime scenes and so on, and they're not just saying, well, his DNA may have been found at multiple crime scenes. No, they were presenting them as facts. Let's keep going with the article from The Independent, which is written by Mike Bedigan, just citing the source. The 50-year-old cold case of D.B. Cooper may have seen a new development after an amateur sleuth claims to have found the parachute used by the infamous yet still unidentified plane hijacker. YouTuber Dan Greider said that he found a modified device matching the one used in the 1971 hijacking on a property in North Carolina and has handed it over to the FBI. Dan Greider, who has been looking into the case for almost 20 years, said in a video series about his investigation that the rig is literally one in a billion. This is the rig he used. We solved it, he says. D.B. Cooper, also known as Dan Cooper, hijacked Northwest Orient Flight 305 on November 24th of 1971. During the flight, Cooper told a flight attendant that he had a bomb, demanding $200,000 in ransom and four parachutes upon landing in Seattle. However, soon after taking off with the intention of heading to Mexico, Cooper opened the aircraft's door and parachuted into the night over southwestern Washington. His true identity and whereabouts remain a mystery to this day. Well, I give this article credit. They're talking about him parachuting over southwestern Washington, and I'm a relative newcomer to the case. I'm relatively new to the Vortex, and I haven't spent 20 years looking into this the way that Dan Greider has, but I think that all of the estimations about where D.B. Cooper could have jumped would be over Washington State, not over Oregon, or even on a recent episode of Cooper Friday, I was talking about how some people think that Cooper jumped over Nevada, but I think that Cooper jumped over southwestern Washington. Let's continue with the article. Dan Greider found what he claims is Cooper's parachute on a property owned by the late Richard McCoy Jr., one of the men considered by the FBI to be a serious suspect in the case. McCoy staged a near-identical hijacking in April of 1972 after boarding a flight in Denver, Colorado, and demanding four parachutes and $500,000 while brandishing a weapon. He later also bailed out of the aircraft. McCoy was killed two years later in a shootout with FBI agents after he escaped from federal prison. Investigators have pointed out that his photo bears a striking resemblance to a sketch. You know, they, this is where some type of blown-up news article is going to start out even talking about the actual story, and then they water it down for the general public. Yes, yes, we know what the Cooper sketches look like. You know, that has no bearing on whether or not Dan Kreider actually found the real parachute or not. Despite Greider's handing over of the parachute, the FBI has yet to update the case status on its website. The last update was made in July of 2016, in which the agency said it would no longer be actively investigating the case. And one thing that is talked about very frequently in the Vortex is that the FBI is still investigating the case, and this whole thing about the case being closed in 2016 doesn't appear to be something that is actually fair to say. But what I think is more important is, look at how they're saying the FBI has not updated their website. The FBI has not confirmed this. These are just unconfirmed allegations that are put forward by Dan Greider. And we also have to look at aspects of the discovery, because this is not just the parachute. This is not just the type of material canvas that would have been floating in the sky. This is also the pack and the container that is claimed to have been found. And Ryan Burns of the D.B. Cooper Sleuth Channel did a very good video when he's talking about how there are documented reports that show that there are differences between the parachute and the pack and the harness that are found by, and the container that are found by Dan Kreider versus what is reported 
that that the, the, the DB Cooper actually used. And I would invite everybody to go over to his channel, DB Cooper Sleuth. If you have not um, subscribed to the DB Cooper Sleuth channel already, I highly invite you to do so. But let's look at what some other people are saying in the MSM and other publications about this possible discovery. And I also want to point out that D Richard Floyd McCoy's children seem to be really on board with the idea of him being the infamous skyjacker known as D.B. Cooper. And this is also not uncommon in true crime cases. I mean, lots of people are first skeptical to hear that their father could have been the Zodiac killer, but then they sign on to it. And a very clear example of this is when Jared Kobeck released his book, How to Find Zodiac, and he's looking at Paul Doerr as a suspect, and Paul Doerr's daughter was completely against that. She's saying, no, absolutely not. And then ultimately... She ended up agreeing with it. But let's look at um, an article from the New York Post called Siblings Claim Late Dad is Mysterious Plane Hijacker, D.B. Cooper After Finding Hidden Parachute and One in a Billion. But, like, let, if we can stay on the Zodiac for a second. When the Zodiac Killers 340 cipher was solved by David Orchak, Earl Van Eyck, and Sam Blake in 2020, we knew that that was the correct solution. Because... Not only did the media report on it that way, they had evidence to support it. You could evaluate their findings for yourself, and it was very clear that the discovery had been made. Do you not see how all of this news coverage is just saying, well, maybe he has found the parachute? And um, some of the differences that Ryan Burns was talking about in this video, just to speed things up, is that... They're talking about how D.B. Cooper's parachute would not have had the D-rings, and this parachute had D-rings and so on, but that's very technical. I want to go to this article from the New York Post. Is he the real McCoy? A pair of North Carolina siblings claim their late father is the ever-elusive Boeing hijacker D.B. Cooper after allegedly finding his parachute hidden in their home, according to a new report. Shante and Richard McCoy the third. Yes, this is McCoy III, to claim that their father, Richard McCoy Jr., was the infamous fugitive who disappeared when he leapt out of a Boeing plane with $200,000 in cash after taking the passenger and the crew hostage. The siblings said they waited until their mother's death in 2020 to come forward, fearing that she could be implicated as the parachute that allegedly belonged to Cooper was found in storage outside their house. And Richard McCoy III appeared on a podcast called The Bridge where he was talking about this, and he openly stated that he believes that his mother was an active participant in both skyjackings, the McCoy skyjacking of 72 and the Cooper skyjacking. So this is another reason why they didn't want to come forward while she was still alive. And as far as Richard McCoy III goes, I don't think that he is a liar. I don't think he's a fraud. He doesn't give off any particular types of con man vibes. He doesn't give off any telltale signs of lying. And as I said, people can first start investigating the possibility of their father being D.B. Cooper, and then all of a sudden they just have this aha moment where they become convinced that their father was indeed D.B. Cooper. Or in, in the case of some people, it's going to be their grandfather when we're in this new generation now. Those types of behaviors are not uncommon. But as far as um, finding the parachute, it's like Richard McCoy was indeed someone who committed his own skyjacking. He did indeed had parachuting experience. Richard McCoy was also a former Green Beret, served in Vietnam. He was somebody who could have had a parachute that was different. I mean, this guy was someone who would have had parachutes in his property. That would not surprise me at all. He would not have had, a, if he had a parachute in his belongings, that would not surprise me. Okay, there, that's a better way of putting it. But was it actually T.B. Cooper's parachute? Because what a lot of people believe as a form of counter-argument is that Richard McCoy was just observing the news because we saw a lot of progress in aviation. I mean, when you go from the Wright brothers in the early 1900s to the 1970s, and we just have commercial aviation everywhere, okay, I mean, things were evolving very fast over the period of 50 and 60 years, whatever it was. 
But what they did not account for was security, that people could do things like D.B. Cooper getting on a plane with either a bomb or a dub, having what appeared to have been a bomb in his briefcase, saying that he wants $200,000 and four parachutes. And somebody like McCoy is noticing that there are multiple skyjackers who are doing this. I mean, this is not even, this is not even a set of isolated incidents. There were people who just recognize that there are holes in the aviation security system and that people can commit these skyjackings and get away with it. Richard McCoy even wrote a paper for Brigham Young University trying to find out ways to stop skyjackings. And then he realized there's really no practical way that somebody can stop a skyjacker because they have to comply with the skyjacker's demands. And even prior to D.B. Cooper, we had the Paul Sini skyjacking also in 1971. And, I mean, Cooper could have been a copycat of Paul Sini, and then Richard McCoy could have been a copycat of Cooper. But I'll continue with the New York Post article. The siblings said that they waited until their mother's death in 2020 to come forward, fearing that she could be implicated, as the parachute that allegedly belonged to Cooper was found in her storage stash. After her death, the siblings met with aviation YouTuber Dan Grider, who has seen the parachute and believes it is the very one used by Cooper in 1971. That rig is literally one in a billion, C Grider told the local outlet about the unique parachute that he saw. Well, if it's one in a billion, I mean, d does that mean that there's a chance that it's not Cooper's parachute? I mean, w there's a difference between one in a billion and being an, ex an exact match. Dan Greider claimed the parachute at the McCoy's home matched the modified parachute prepared by veteran skydiver Earl Cossey as part of Cooper's demands before he disappeared somewhere between Seattle and Reno, Nevada. Okay, so the Independent is saying Southern Washington. This one is doing what I said like a lot of other people do. They're like, maybe Oregon, maybe maybe Northern Nevada. But um, no, I think Cooper jumped over uh, Southern Washington, but that's just me. And it, Earl Cossey would go on to be the victim of a, 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 a different crime in the new millennium. And Earl Cossey was ultimately murdered. And I have an episode about that here on this channel, talking about the murder of Earl Cossey, where I actually interviewed Darren Schaefer of the Cooper Vortex. And I invite you to check that out. You can also hit the like button and subscribe if you want to follow along with all of these episodes about D.B. Cooper. But, um, I'll get back to the article here. D.B. Cooper sleuths have raised the possibility that Richard Jr. was the fugitive for years, given his own criminal past. I mean, there are reasons to suspect McCoy. He's not a baseless suspect, and he's not a far-out suspect. But ultimately, I mean, I just think that we've we're dealing with a different person, very different personalities, different ages, because McCoy was 29 years old at the time, and Cooper was estimated to have been in his early to mid-40s. Five months after D.B. Cooper pulled off his caper, Richard Jr. was caught pulling off a similar hijacking in Utah. The thief eventually broke out of prison and died in a subsequent shootout with the police. The McCoy siblings told Grider they've known the truth for years, but talking about it remained taboo in their family over worries that law enforcement would implicate their mother, Karen, in both hijackings. Well, now wait a second, wait a second, just because you know the truth, it doesn't mean it is the truth. And I should, I shouldn't even say it in a lighthearted way. We have other people out there who also claim that they know the truth about D.B. Cooper. We have people like even even like former UFC fighter Chael Sonnen who is saying that he obtained the truth about D.B. Cooper because of what? Family stories, or they figured it out on their own. And, I mean, that's ultimately what Chael Sonnen's claim is, that he knows who D.B. Cooper was because of family stories, whereas, I mean, the McCoy siblings have obtained this as a as a combination of things, it seems, that it's halfway family stories and it's halfway connecting the dots on their own part. Dan Greider published his latest theory and images of the parachute with the FBI, allegedly reaching out to the McCoys to see the evidence. Oh, there's nothing wrong with the FBI seeing the evidence. They should see the evidence. They should explore McCoy as a suspect, but that doesn't mean that he was D.B. Cooper. And furthermore, furthermore, all of this news coverage is just saying maybe. There's an enormous difference between maybe and saying, hey, we've actually found the thing. The McCoys told the Daily Post that the FBI searched North Carolina, their North Carolina complex, for additional clues and took possession of the parachute in 2023, with Rick also providing investigators with a DNA sample. The agents allegedly informed him that the next step could be to exhume his father's body, but such a request has yet to be made. The FBI has not made any public statements about the investigation or acknowledged that it has been actively looking into the D.B. Cooper case. 
Well, this is what people are talking about. If they are looking into the D.B. Cooper case and they are doing these types of steps, then the case isn't completely closed, and that is something that I would agree with. The agency has said the case was officially closed in 2016 over a lack of leads. Whether Cooper survived the jump or over broken wooded landscapes somewhere between Seattle and Reno has never been confirmed. This New York Post article is even pointing out that, hey, wait a second, we don't know if that's Cooper's parachute. They're t- talking by saying, okay, Dan Greider has made a claim that he has found D.B. Cooper's parachute. The McCoys have made this claim that they have found D.B. Cooper's parachute, but wait a second, wait a second. We don't even know if D.B. Cooper survived the jump, according to them. One of the few clues about the hijacker's identity was his recovered black tie and a crumpling package of $20 bills matching the ransom money serial numbers, which was unearthed by a young boy from a sandbar along the Columbia River in 1980. And I think it's really weird that that article is just choosing to end it right there. That is the conclusion of the article. Yes, there was money that was found at Tina Bar, but that doesn't, um, that really doesn't have any direct, um, connection to this particular story because Dan Greider's whole claim is that they found D.B. Cooper's parachute in storage. And all I'm seeing is insufficient evidence. All I'm seeing is unverified information. All I'm seeing is just that he made a video. And to Dan Greider's credit, he is very good at getting attention for his YouTube channel. His subscriber count is in the six digits. He gets a lot of views on his YouTube channel, Probable Cause. I will give him credit for that. And if he wants to share his message with a very large audience, he is doing that. However, did he actually find the parachute? Did he actually make the discovery? All I'm seeing from these news articles is, well, there's this guy named Dan Greider, and he made a video about D.B. Cooper, and in the video he says he found the parachute. That's what they're reporting, and this is how the MSM twists facts. They give you that information, and it's just leading people in the general public to believe that he has actually found the parachute. So let's keep going with um, some of these different articles here. For example, we have one from Fox News. If we're going to talk about MSM sources, let's look at what Fox News has to say. This also came out three days ago. North Carolina siblings say late father is D.B. Cooper after finding alleged parachute in his home. Richard McCoy Jr. was convicted of a similar hijacking in Utah months after the D.B. Cooper case. And as I said, I do have a standalone episode about Richard McCoy as a D.B. Cooper suspect, and it's actually where I've interviewed Ryan Burns of the D.B. Cooper Sleuth Channel. And I'm just going to also throw in one thing, and this isn't from Dan Greider's third video where he's talking about the FBI. This is from Dan Greider's first video, and I'm just going to ask this to you guys as a challenge question, and let me know. Let me know if I'm completely far out on this. Let me know if I'm just completely off base with this. In Dan Greider's first video, he demonstrated that by jumping out of an airplane and holding on to the $200,000, there is no feasible or practical way that D.B. Cooper could have held on to it because the money would have been blown away. So then with that type of thinking, Richard McCoy is going to plan a new skyjacking where he's going to get twice the amount of money and then some to, number one, get the money that he needs, but also to get twice the amount of money plus another $100,000 as a type of compensation for losing the money during the first skyjacking. But Dan Greider does this reenactment in his own video where he jumps out of the plane because he is a skydiver and he's holding on to what would have simulated $200,000 and there's no way he could have held on to it. It gets blown away. I follow everything that he's saying, but that to me is based purely on the assumption that D.B. Cooper would not have been able to secure the money to his harness or to secure the money to his body, secure the money to himself in some particular way. It's based on the assumption that he didn't do that and that he was holding the money with his bare hands. Maybe not bare hands, maybe he's wearing some type of gloves, but he was manually holding the money. And that's really what I want your responses to. That's what I want you guys to respond to for this episode of Cooper Friday or Cooper Saturday. Please put your idea in the comment section down below. How do you think D.B. Cooper tried to secure the money to his to his parachute and harness and contraption? How do you think that D.B. Cooper tried to secure the money, period? Please put your idea in the comment section down below because 
not everybody is in agreement with Dan Grider that D.B. Cooper would have jumped out of the plane and he just has this bundle of money in a bag in his arms. Not everyone thinks that because, for example, in the book Into the Blast by Skip Porteous and Robert Blevins, they talk about how they believe that Cooper would have jumped and he would have had the bag of money hanging below him and the money would have actually touched down first. So it's not that he's just kind of wrapping the money around his body or something with a fishing line the way that somebody else proposed and that it's just tightly secured against him. They thought the money would have been hanging loosely. But, I mean, that is another one that people have also pointed out. They thought he would have had something as simple as a fishing line fishing line and he tightly secured it to his body. Other people think that he took some type of um, other instrument to have the money connected to him. And there are people out there who think that, okay, D.B. Cooper was not Richard Floyd McCoy, but he also lost the money during the skyjacking. What do you think happened to that? Please put your ideas in the comment section down below and really just let me know if I'm completely off point with this with this issue about how Dan Grider is making the assumption that D.B. Cooper had to have been jumping with the money in his arms, that he had to have been manually holding the money when he was jumping. Now, you might be saying something about the uh, rings on the parachute. Okay, well, even even if, even if there aren't the suitable rings to attach the money to the parachute, then... There are other ways to tie a bag to uh, to a container, if you understand me. Especially, especially when you're on an airplane that would have had numerous suitable objects and so on. And all you would need is some type of device or contraption or piece of string. Even you could attempt that. That wouldn't be the most suitable option, but you could attempt it. Please let me know what you think down below. Back to the Fox News article. A pair of North Carolina siblings believe their late father was the elusive D.B. Cooper, a skyjacker who infamously leapt out of a plane with $200,000 in cash in the 1971 heist. Shantae and Richard McCoy III, also known as Rick, claim their father, Richard McCoy Jr., is the fugitive after allegedly finding the suspect's parachute hidden in their home. The case remains unsolved 53 years later. The unknown thief who used the name Dan Cooper took passengers and crew hostage on Northwest Orient Flight 305 before jumping out and disappearing somewhere between Seattle and Nevada. Wearing a business suit, he passed a note to a flight attendant stating that he had a bomb in his briefcase and wanted her to sit with him. Authorities said that he then opened his briefcase to show a bunch of wires and colored sticks. He allegedly told the flight attendant to take note that the captain demanding to take note to the captain demanding four parachutes and $200,000. The case would prompt one of the longest and most exhaustive investigations in FBI history. The McCoy said that the FBI searched the North Carolina home and took possession of the parachute in 2023. Rick McCoy also provided DNA samples to the investigators. The McCoy siblings said they've known the truth about their father for years, but talking about it remained taboo in their family. And we've already been over those reasons. So that is ultimately where I'm going to leave it at for you guys. And I want to know your responses to the challenge questions. And it seems like that the McCoys believe that their parents were involved with this. They think it was a husband and wife team that concocted the plans for two skyjackings. But, I mean, just give me your honest feedback. I think you have... I think you have heard everything that I've said in this episode clear as day that there is insuff insufficient evidence to say that that's actually D.B. Cooper's parachute. The MSM completely knows that there's insufficient evidence. There are certain assumptions that Dan Grider is making, and it wouldn't be uncommon for somebody like Richard McCoy, who had jumping experience, to have a parachute in his possession. You've heard my take on this. This case remains unsolved, but I would love to know your ideas. And one more time, you can hit the like button and subscribe if you choose. Answer the challenge question, and if you want to send larger thanks, you can contact me at blackboxonlineradio at AOL.com. You can also get me on Facebook. My Facebook name is Ned Dahan, but I also have a Black Box Online Radio Facebook page, and there is always Instagram, blackboxned88. And I will see you guys over there. Until next time.